Hi everybody, my name is Lauren and welcome back to my channel, Plants and Things. I just want to take the time to really again thank my subscribers, my new subscribers, my OG subscribers that keep coming back and watching my videos. I just love seeing it. It's so exciting and it just gives me a little motivation to just keep going and just to keep finding interesting things to talk about with you guys about plants, whether it's plant care or new plants or just what's going on with my plants. So if you're not already following my Instagram, you can follow my Instagram, I'll put it below. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. It is free. And if you like this video, you like the content that I'm putting out, please like the video and always, always feel free to drop a comment below. So let's get into this video. So today's video is going to be about plant supplies for beginners. And when I say beginners, I'm specifically talking about beginner plant collectors because there's some people who just, you know, want to have a plant or two. They're maybe moving, getting a new place, and they just want to have a plant or two, and they now all of a sudden don't know what they need to take care of the plant. You don't need a ton of things. If you are just an admirer and you just have a couple plants in your house, all you need is a good location in your house. Just find a good spot in your house that gets good light. It's not super cool. That's all you need. You don't even need a watering can. Bring it to the sink and water it. And dare I say, you don't need fertilizer. Dare I say that. And the only reason I say that is because generally, if you're just a plant admirer and you're just picking up a couple plants, you probably picked it up from a big box store and it probably has a slow, leak, slow release fertilizer in it. So you're not gonna need any fertilizer for a while. So yeah, if that's you, this video might not be for you. On the other end of the spectrum, if you're gonna be a hardcore propagator, plant seller, there's a lot of things you're gonna need. And so that is on another level. So I'm talking about the people in between there where you're just maybe you have five to ten plants and you want to grow your collection but you are still new to this and you're kind of getting overwhelmed because it's a lot of information on YouTube, a lot of good information, but sometimes you don't know where to start. So this video is for you. So as a beginner plant collector, there are going to be some things that you're going to want or need that's going to come as a no-brainer to you. And those are like the fun things, like all the different pots and plant furniture. And so I'm not really going to discuss those types of things because those are just going to come to you that you're going to want this. And it's really all based on your circumstances in your home, what you may need in terms of plant furniture and different types of pots and things. So that's the fun part. We don't need help with that part. What we might need help with is the more technical things. So that's where I'm going to start with. So these things are in no particular order of importance. So I'm just going to get started. And one thing that you definitely are going to want as a beginner plant collector is a complete fertilizer. And that can be a whole entire video in itself on all the different types of fertilizers there are. So I'm gonna tell you from my experience getting lost in the wormhole of the YouTube plant world, what is gonna be the simplest, no-brainer, is not gonna steer you wrong options, okay? So two things you can, two options I should say that you have for a complete beginner fertilizer for beginners that's gonna be easy to use. So these are both easily accessible. This one here is a sample size, but even as a sample size, this will give you quite a few uses. So let me put this one down. This here is liquider. So this sample size comes in this little packet here, but this little packet is gonna make a gallon of something like this that you would use to put in your watering tank. So this I love for beginners because this is like eight or nine dollars on Amazon. So say for some strange reason you don't like this, um, which I guess is possible, everyone is different, it's only eight dollars. So it's not gonna, you're not gonna be out a lot of money trying something. They do have a bigger container of it for I believe 30 or 40 dollars, which will last you much longer, like literally years. Um, it's it's a really affordable, easy way to start fertilizing your plants. There is a little setup 
to it, which again, that could be in a whole separate video, or you can find plenty of videos on liquid dirt on how to use it, how to mix it. I just like this because it's complete. It can be used for all plants. It's not technically a fertilizer in the sense that it can burn the roots of plants. So you don't need to worry about that aspect of things. So it can be used all year around. Um, and it's natural. So this I really, really highly recommend for beginners. And it's good to kind of get you in the routine of making a fertilizer water for your plants. And, and you can use it hydroponics, you can use it soil, it works in any substrate. So that's number reason, number one recommendation for fertilizer that I have for beginner plant collectors. Another option which you might find more accessible, the liquid that you do need to order online either from their website or Amazon. Um, if not, and you can only go to the store, then your good old miracle Grow or whatever store brand of plant food, you just want it to be again like an all-purpose house plant um, fertilizer. And it's gonna be the same idea of using this to dil dilute this in your watering can. However, you definitely want to follow the instructions on this, but this will last you a long time. You just want, would want to be careful of how often you're using it, the season that you're using it in. So this may come with, you know, some things that you need to weigh in before you decide to use it, whereas the liquid dirt can be used all year round, anytime, and it's literally a no-brainer. But it just may not be accessible to everybody, so that's why I included another option. So just as a disclaimer, these things that I'm mentioning, I'm not saying that these are the only options. I'm saying from my experience, this is what I found to be the simplest, quickest, effective option. So along the lines with watering your plants with fertilizer, obviously you're gonna need some type of watering vessel, whatever you prefer. Um, to me, it's a no brainer, but I figured I'd mention it anyways, especially if you're gonna be using fertilizer, you may you know, need some type of watering container to hold your fertilizer water, just something, anything to water your plants. So the next thing I'm gonna mention is the good old moisture meter. I feel like a broken record. I feel like I don't make a video without talking about this. <laughs> but that's because it's really like a basic necessity. Like it really, that just shows you how much the moisture meter is really a basic necessity. Just get one. Amazon, it doesn't matter. This one is supposed to be a light and pH measurer as well, which is cool. I'm not into pH. Um, uh, adjusting the pH of my water just yet. For me, that's a little bit more detailed than I would like to go because I like to just enjoy it. Not that I don't like the science of things. I'm just not on that level yet. So there are some fancy moisture meters and then there's some simple moisture meters. But either way, you need a moisture meter. And I have another video showing how to use it properly. I'm not sure if it's going to be up before or after this video, but yes it is a basic necessity twelve dollars on amazon the links for all of these things that i have gone if i can find the link i will absolutely put it in the description below moisture meter. especially when you have several plants and you're starting to have a collection you really might want to have a moisture meter to kind of guide you because uh, i find that for myself personally i don't have a set day that i go and water my plants i did when i had like two or three plants, you know, I would just water them on Sunday. You know, I just check to see if they needed to be watered. But as you start to have a collection of different types of plants and different plants in different stages of growth, like plants that are putting out new leaves need to be watered more often, or if you have propagations, that for me personally, once having a day scheduled for watering just doesn't work for me. And I'm so obsessed with my plants anyways that every time I come home, I check my dogs, I check my plants. <laughs> like So when I check my plants, whatever needs to be watered gets watered. And sometimes I do. Sometimes I walk around with this to all my plants and I check them, which one needs to be watered. And then that's how I do it. That's what works for me because I just enjoy walking around watering my plants. <laughs> oh, I'm such a loser. Okay. So next thing you're going to need, eventually you may not need this depending on where you live or the time of the year. However, at some point, depending on how large you choose to grow your collection, you will need some sort of grow light setup. 
Now, what I have found to work easiest for me, what I would recommend for beginners, is a grow light that is adjustable. And when I mean adjustable, I mean that the that has arms that are adjustable. So I'll insert a video just showing um, the type of grow light that I have. And I like it and I appreciate it. And I think it's good for beginners because it's adjustable. I have several plants in an area and some plants need more light than others. And so that's why I appreciate that it's adjustable. There are a ton of grow lights out there, like a literal ton. And they all have different strengths. Some have different colors. Um, to keep it simple, again, as a beginner, full spectrum is the simplest explanation I can give you. It's gonna have the full spectrum of like, just like the sunlight, it's closest to natural sunlight. So you just want a full spectrum grow light. Again, I'll link in the description the one that I have, which I really do like and I really feel like it's working well for my plants, giving them adequate light. And again, the biggest factor for me is that it's adjustable and it has a stand. So the next thing you definitely, definitely, and I, I wanna say that this is honestly, I guess I can't say that. I was gonna say that it's regardless of where you live, but it may not be. I think that you absolutely need a humidifier. And the reason I say that it may not be regardless of where you live, because even though you may live in an area that the humidity or the climate is pretty much the same all year round, when you have a humidifier that you can adjust the level of the humidity, that is gonna make a difference. Uh, the main reason you'll need a humidifier in general is just because that's a major part of uh, tropical house plants. The humidity level they're used to being in rainforest or tropical areas and our homes are most likely not gonna be that. So just trying to mimic that habitat, a humidifier is gonna be a necessity. If you have access to be able to get one, get a humidifier. One that is going to show you the actual percentage or level of humidity is going to be better so that you can control it. Mine, um, I can link it in the description. It's not the best one. And the only reason it's not the best one is because you cannot choose the percentage level. You can choose the intensity, like how much steam you want to come out, but you can't choose the actual percentage. Um, so that's the only thing. It does have a timer though, which I don't use anyway, so that's not necessary and it's not the largest so there are others that are better which I can also link in the description but if you're looking for something easy to just start out with that works because this does work even though it doesn't have all the fancy bells and whistles my plants are doing good so one thing that is going to be most likely unavoidable when having house plants is pests you are going to have some sort of pest experience at some point. It may not be an outbreak. I hope you don't have an outbreak. I don't wish that on anybody. I thankfully have not had a true outbreak of anything yet. I've had a small case of spider mites and I've had a moderate case of fungus gnats, which is like pretty much under control at this point. Um, so yeah, you if you're about to start collecting some plants, just go get you some type of insect killer repellent to something. It's inevitable to, to um, not have pests for one, but sometimes an outbreak is inevitable and it doesn't make you a bad plant person. So don't feel bad if you have pests, just deal with them, just deal with them. The most common that you're most likely going to experience are either fungus gnats or spider mites. So the two basic pest control items that I have that I think I would recommend for any beginner plant collector is mosquito bits for fungus gnats because you either are going to be overwatering your plants and you have a lot of humidity in the air and it's, and it's attracting fungus gnats or you might be underwatering forgetting about it having dry dead leaves everywhere and attracting spider mites so this is general houseplant insect killer but it does work on spider mites i have found that to work well another basic Thing you'll need as a plant collector at some point maybe not initially is soil some type of substrate or soil to grow your plants in you won't need this initially as you first start picking up plants and I'm not saying by any means that as a beginner you only need soil and you don't need other things like pond or leca and that if you're a beginner you shouldn't use those things I'm not saying that at all all I'm saying is that 
If you're a beginner collector, you're most likely getting your first few plants from the store. And most likely those plants are gonna come to you in soil. So if that's the case, you probably aren't gonna be immediately switching out plants in Sapan and Lekka as a beginner. If you are, power to you because that's awesome. However, you probably aren't. It can get really easy to go on a deep dive into soil mixes and different substrates and trust me, I've been there. Let's bring it back and make it really simple though. For a basic soil mix for general house plants is going to be something light and airy mixed with maybe one other thing again to keep it simple. So I would recommend a cactus soil mixed with perlite. Your cactus soil is going to have some perlite in it, but to lighten it up even a little bit more so that it doesn't become dense on you is just to simply add some perlite. And like I said before, this is not the only things, it's not the best thing, it is the simplest yet still effective method. So you can do a 70-30 mix or a 60-40 mix of your soil to perlite. Again, a cactus soil that's gonna be a little more light is most likely already gonna have some amendments in it for you and you just need to adjust it a little bit more. It's not to say that you cannot just use cactus soil, you can, but if you're gonna be growing a collection and repotting things, you wanna have some personalization and customization to your soil that's gonna make it a little more effective. So I would say the bare minimum that you can do that's gonna be easy and effective is to use a cactus soil with perlite mix. And again, this is not to say that passive hydroponics, semi-hydroponics, leka, pond, pumice, other ways of growing your plants are not easy and simple. They are, however, it just may require a bit more setup. So say you're gonna do passive hydroponics, you're gonna need some nutrients, you're gonna need some pH sometimes. Like it just can require more things that, again, takes you down a rabbit hole. So the last thing I wanna mention is not necessarily a thing, but it is still important to me, which I have found that affected me. And that is basically just having patience and still having a good time. Plants are here to make us happy. Like they're literally for our enjoyment, for our air quality, like it's to make us happy. So it can be really easy to get caught up in the hype because I got caught up in the hype <laughs> of the rare plants, the expensive plants, and just the Instagram plant world. Like it's so easy to get caught up with all the beautiful plants and wanting to have them all and it can get expensive. So just have fun with it. Don't feel bad if you don't have a huge collection or if you don't have rare plants, you just have, just enjoy your process and be patient with you in your process. That's all I had to say. So those are the few things that I would highly recommend as a beginner plant collector. They are some pretty big necessities in there. So my list is not to say that those are the best and only things. Those are to say that those are the easiest yet still effective methods because there are some other easier things but they may not be as effective and then there are some things that are more effective but they're not really easy for beginners. So that is how what I had in mind when I compiled the list of things for beginner plant collectors again based on my own experience so i hope you guys appreciated this video let me know in the comments below if there's something i didn't mention that you were like oh i wish i had that as a new plant collector or something you would recommend that i didn't mention or if there's something that you don't have yet that you're like oh i really do need that just let me know in the comments below and again i really do always always appreciate everyone's interactions with my video whether they're liking it or commenting or subscribing to my channel i really do appreciate it so i hope to see you in the next one